This robot can run faster than a human being. It, is this a threat to humans? Let's understand what the human robot can do now and talk about um, what all the other robots can do after we review several videos of it. So this is the Unitree robot, the H1 from China. And you can see it can do all kinds of uh, jumping and other actions. Um, and we can also see that, that it was running. Um, it can run about seven miles per hour and go to 12 miles per hour. Um, Boston Dynamics has a cheetah bot that in theory could go 28 miles per hour. Um, and at uh, 12 miles per hour, that is the speed of a um, uh, of a human marathoner doing about two hour uh, marathon. And But the other capabilities are that it has um, uh, LIDAR, 3D LIDAR, that can um, let it scan all the way around. So it certainly the capability is there to make these things into a Terminator-like robot in terms of the speed and, and other capability. Um, but I think, as we know, that they're more looking towards um, work aspects. There's also some interesting um, backflips in this does with all electric motors. And uh, Brian, one of the interesting things on that backflip is how he catches himself. After the backflip, he doesn't quite make the full rotation, but he catches himself. That, mm -hmm. was, that was quite uh, a, a move for a robot to do. Right. And they used um, reinforcement learning. So there's a, a research paper that discusses uh, that, and there's a video here where they use uh, the, the research paper is um, is here, humanoid bench simulated humanoid bot for locomotion manipulation. And basically they have that robot here in a virtual environment going up and down stairs. And that's where it's, it's learning how to do the backflips and other actions. Yeah, it's very, very, very fascinating. So they have AI capability. So it wasn't just like a Boston Dynamics where they um, uh, programmed just that action and, and did it for a video. They actually have um, other actions. And they can also do move boxes around. So they do have some hands in there. Normally it's, it's stubs at the wrist, but they have a hand, which you can see in this action here. But the hands don't seem to, the fingers don't really move. It's kind of like almost like a mannequin, like hands. Uh, but I'm sure that they'll have the money to, to do full action and they can go up the stairs. Okay, and now we have the agility robot uh, digit, which is uh, working at um, Amazon. They may be deal with that. So they're working in the distribution centers for Amazon where they're, um, so here again, it's, it's uh, the hands are more like uh, mitts where it's uh, not really um, a full hand action, but they have little hooks for moving the boxes so you can get by with less. And then their uh, legs have the knee joints going the other way. This is for the agility robot, um, which is, they're making a factory, um, which can make a, a thousand to 10,000 units um, per, um, uh, per year. And they will use it in their factory. So I guess some question will be, um, what you know what will be the potential of the various robots, and um, and where do we see things going? So we've had quite a few discussions before on, on other videos about Tesla Bot, um, but what is your um, your um, take on some of these other competitors? Yeah, so this is going to be a com very competitive market. There is about 24 different companies that we've identified so far that are in the business. They have all kinds of different capabilities. So we've got everything from figure AI, which is the first one that actually is uh, speaking and you know, listening to uh, its handler and then speaking back and having a conversation. Uh, we have, as you pointed out, the ones with the backflips up and down stairs and and uh, going over all kinds of different terrains, different kinds of hands, which is one of the key things is how, how good are the hands? And as you pointed out, in a lot of cases, a lot of use cases, you don't have to have great hands, but some of the companies like Tesla and others have very sophisticated hands. 
uh, with multiple joints and being able to do uh, uh, one of the experts, Scott Walter, talks about whether it can do the uh, <laughs> the high sign or not being, uh, you know, one example of some of the uh, of the flexibility uh, that some of the bots might have and other bots won't have. Other people have talked about whether it can play piano or not. Um, so, uh, you know, that would be a, a real indicator of flexibility. So there's a, a wide range of, of capability at this point. Yeah, so here with an earlier version of the Tesla bot in the factory, um, moving moving parts, and then there was the, um, let's see, what else we have here? Okay, so here's the figure AI one, where it's doing the uh, uh, training human commands. We You mentioned that. So the chat, this is using chat GPT capabilities uh, because uh, Figure AI has a deal with uh, uh, OpenAI. Um, they, they are one of the investors as well as having a deal with them uh, to work with them on a lot of this capability. So I think what the key would be on this situation is you have, again, these 24 competitors already, and there's probably going to be a lot more, especially in China, because the Chinese government is putting a huge amount of effort behind this, behind this, and I would, I'm kind of shocked that we don't have the U.S. government also coming in and putting some effort behind it. Because this is this is a strategic issue. Mm -hmm. uh, bots today are being used to move things around factories, but uh, there's no reason why these can't be soldiers. Um, so I, I could well imagine a future where it won't just be drones. Uh, that we'll be concerned about, but there will be, and we also already have lots of other autonomous things besides just air, air, air-based drones. We have uh, uh, submarines that are autonomous. We have uh, boats that are autonomous. We have, uh, you know, tanks that are autonomous. So ve vehicles, uh, you know, will be uh, in that too. So, so all these different kinds of robots, if you will, are all going to be part of a military future. Um, and so it's kind of shocking that the U.S. government isn't sure. I mean, the, the DARPA has had their uh, robot competitions over the years, which have been really instrumental in some of the autonomous driving and other things that are taking place, including with Tesla. But uh, I, uh, yeah, so the, so I think my, my long story short, these 24 companies are going to be competing over an almost unlimited TAM. Elon Musk has stated that we're probably talking about seven to 15 billion bots that will be humanoid bots, not counting all kinds of other bots, just humanoid bots, two per, two per person in the entire world is the TAM that we're talking about. So you could have a thousand companies fighting over this business and they can all still do very well if they're producing a, um, you know, a decent bot for a decent price. And basically, it will be the entire world competing for it, because if the potential at 8 billion bots is pretty much replacing most human labor, then, of course, all countries must make this a strategic um, investment um, and, and, and get in that competition. And so all countries will get into it, not just the United States and um, and China. There's some several European companies. I think Aptronics was is one that's a, a pretty large European company, but clearly everyone will get into it. And if Tesla succeeds with uh, full self-driving and other self-driving car companies succeed, that is another form of automation that will be a multi-trillion dollar uh, market, which would uh, rapidly change the future. So, so I think the summarize is that uh, we agree that there will be Terminator type type robots made. Someone will make them. It's just uh, an obvious move to make, but it will be less impactful than the transformation of the world economically that will uh, take place. And development will be very rapid. And we have several other videos that discuss the pace of that innovation. Yes, that would be a good a good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, um, just as a as a kind of a follow on to that, though, 
We're talking about not just for replacing workers that are currently doing dirty and, and, and repetitive jobs and things that humans may not prefer to do, which is what automation has been doing for you know generations. But we're also looking at bots that will be doing jobs that otherwise couldn't be done by a human because they're too expensive to be done. So there's, that's why there could be more than one per person, uh, uh, one per person maybe for manufacturing and, and making things, and one per person for your personal your personal slave. And then we'll get into a whole another <laughs> set of. Well, issues. I think also more um, uh, less um, shocking, or, or, or you know, for that purpose of, of having as, as a servant, is that a humanoid robot walking with you, say a Tesla bot, with a three kilowatt hour uh, battery is basically one that has 30 times the power energy battery of a, a laptop and maybe 50 times, 200 times the energy of a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So, but you wouldn't have to carry it around. So it'd be like a walking super server with the power of a, of the high-end AI chips. So NVIDIA is rolling out these AI chips and, and having the extra uh, compute power for that is something that you need for faster inference, which is why, um, as we, we saw in the most recent keynote from Jensen Wong of NVIDIA, and here's the keynote of that, where Jensen Wong came on stage with nine of the robots. So NVIDIA being a $2 trillion company, one of the hottest companies going, you know, making a key part of his uh, two hour presentation. And making specific chips and hardware and software for this. Yes, and and they spent a huge percentage of that two hours on humanoid robots. It was probably the part of the talk that got the most attention. Right, right. So uh, a lot more to cover, but this was just a review uh, for people who need to get up to date on the main things that are happening with humanoid robots. That all the big companies are getting into it. You have Tesla, you have NVIDIA, um, Microsoft and OpenAI invested into several of these companies. So this is um, where a lot of action is. And Apple and Apple announcing yesterday that they are looking into, and they're looking at it on that personal uh, servant side. Uh, they didn't mention anything about the factory robot. They were looking at it more on the side of the, the home use. Um, that We have one of the uh, companies over in China um, I'm going to forget their name, Fourier, uh, who is talking about primarily in the medical uh, uh, area, uh, using it for, uh, you know, lifting uh, folks uh, or moving, moving people, helping people with their therapies, et cetera, in hospitals or in nursing home situations. So uh, lots and lots of niches, lots and lots of opportunities should be a wild and crazy decade as we see these humanoids starting to actually get into action. Okay, sounds good. So let's uh, talk next time and get going about this and other technology topics. You bet. Okay.